Anyways, uh, thanks for coming. I uh, greatly appreciate it. My name is Thorsten. I own uh, this company here, Arctic Sun Arena. Most of you probably know me. Uh, we decided to uh, bring in these HIVs about uh, a year ago when uh, I was really running into problems on our high efficient houses on the heat recovery side. I couldn't just really meet passive house level. I hooked up with Zender and we installed a, a prototype unit basically, in, or it's not a prototype unit, but for us it was uh, an HIV system in uh, my personal house, which we built two years ago. And um, I was really, really impressed with the performance on it. It's really a day and night difference between what we've done before, uh, which really led me to uh, look more into the uh, ventilation side than I had before. And uh, I'm really convinced for our high performance buildings that. This is a really an essential key for us. We need to have better heat recovery ventilation and we also need to have preheating on the incoming fresh air uh, system basically, which uh, can be achieved fairly easily with the Zender system. So I'd like to introduce Barry uh, with uh, Zender North America. I know that the audience here in Alaska has got a little bit more experience with heat recovery ventilation than a lot of my audiences because it is more mainstream here. Houses are getting tighter and tighter and that's with techniques, with materials. You're building much better houses and with that air infiltration, exfiltration rates are way down so heat recovery ventilation or proper ventilation becomes much more of an issue and as, as you build houses tighter moisture, mold, all those issues have been the unintended consequence and without proper ventilation that leads to all sorts of problems. I'm going to talk about efficiency and that has a major impact on comfort and energy efficiency as well as health. And what we're going to talk about is the temperature of the air that's coming out of a heat recovery ventilation unit and into the home. And the higher the efficiency, the closer that is to the inside ambient temperature. And the closer that is, the better comfort is, the better energy efficiency is, and cool air being blown around a house can affect health as well. So. Our solution and our design principle for ventilation systems is to use a heat recovery ventilator with supply and return to the outside. Exhaust is coming out of bathrooms and the kitchen. That's all the red arrows. Supply going into primarily bedrooms and living spaces. And that's a balanced with the amount of supply into the bedrooms, living spaces, and returns out of the bathrooms, the kitchen. So you're getting rid of the moisture and poor quality air out of the bathrooms and kitchen. And our design focuses on bedrooms first and living spaces if necessary to balance the system. We talk about a cascade system, and th there are different approaches to putting in ventilation systems. We talk about a cascade system where putting a lot of supply into bedrooms and allowing that air to then flow through the house, through the hallways, through the living spaces to the bathrooms and kitchen where it's exhausted out. As opposed to, let's say you put 10 CFM of supply and return into, the bedroom, into each bedroom. So that 10 comes in and goes out of the bedroom. And then this is the obvious problem with without proper ventilation in tight homes. You know, you can see that this is just a general look at where things have been going. You've got energy consumption rising with central heating in homes and making homes much more efficient. And that skyrocketed because we didn't do this until later when you figured out how much energy you were blowing outside with prop improper insulation and not good windows and all of those things. So energy was, consumption was very high. Comfort was better, but it wasn't a good match. So now they've started making houses tighter, more insulation, and brings down the energy cost. It does cost more to do that, but the comfort's rising. And then you get into all of these things, and that's where we're headed is what Torsten and others are doing with Passive House and other extremely tight, well-insulated envelopes, energy-efficient systems for geothermal, solar, all of those things. And heat recovery ventilation is a very big part of that. And with that, these European systems, it's Passive House, Minergy is the Swiss version of 
passive house. It's a whole way to build houses, extremely energy efficient. This is a little uh, laboratory on the side of a hill above Lake Zurich in Switzerland. And this is Rudy Creasy is the uh, former director of development for Zender Comfo Systems. And uh, his house is, these are all duplex homes. And you can see they have solar radiant arrays on the end of the houses that are collecting solar radiant. And they're different size panels as well. And this was from 1990, so it's quite a while ago that he put this all together and built this house to figure out what works and what doesn't. And what he discovered was that this was a typical Swiss house in 1990 as far as energy consumption goes. And each one of these steps is the reduction in energy. So you can see the building shape was critical. Orientation of windows is the solar side. Passive solar design and, and passive house, this would be even bigger a factor. They really focus on solar, solar heat gain, especially in the wintertime. U-value of windows and, and doors is here. U-value windows is big at that time. In Switzerland in 1990, there weren't a lot of triple glaze, you know, three-pane windows. There weren't a lot of silver-lined windows with low E. So that this, these houses used some of the first triple glazed windows that were built in Switzerland. And again, roofs and walls. And Passive House, again, uses a, even further beyond what these were as far as reducing energy requirements. And then the heat recovery ventilation is a big step. So you can see that all these steps down, heat recovery ventilation played a pretty big part in reducing energy use in the home. <coughs> And then you get into the, the uh, solar collectors, different size. One big point, this is about 90 square feet of, of solar collectors. Those are the smaller ones that you saw in those different houses. An additional 250 square feet, you look at the step down in energy use, that's what's called the diminishing returns. The first 90 square feet got as much as another whole 250 square feet of Person knows all about that too. There's, this, there's such a thing as more than more than what you really need for solar collection. And then solar storage and wastewater recovery brings it right down to this, which is he used about a half a quart of wood per winter to do the heating and hot water in the home. And it's a very similar approach to what Torsten's doing with houses here in this area. Here's the real important slide. This is what it costs below the line. And this is amateurized over, over uh, say, 20 years on a house. And that's what Passive House is all about. You can build a really good envelope and do all of those things without a huge increase in the cost of, of homes. So in a cold climate, that reduction in energy is about 15% using high-performance heat recovery. Thanks everybody for coming.